Hey, 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 what's up, you guys? Welcome along. Welcome to Financial Freedom TV. I hope you're doing fantastically well. I hope you had a great week so far. Um, you know, I'm loving this week because it's just been exploding people reaching new qualifications. I'm so, so excited for all of them. It's just super, super exciting. And the month is not yet finished. We still got like eight days to go. So it's going to be absolutely nuts by the end of this month so i'm loving loving every single minute of it i'm actually in lithuania right now i just flown here uh to do some training with the team but and also visit uh my uh, uh family here so um but of course i still want to go live and give you a training tip to uh, this evening so uh the title of this video is what story are you going to believe so if you're watching a replay of this, please do me a massive favor and stick hashtag replay into the comments. And if you're new, if you're watching one of my videos for the first time, please do say new in the comments because I'd love to welcome you to the tribe and say hello. And of course, if you learn something from this video, or you get some value, feel free to share it because maybe somebody else will get some value too. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a story uh, and the story goes like this. Um, uh, there was a small boy uh, who, I mean, already like a school age, but still a very young boy. Uh, and he comes home from school and he brings a letter with him and he gives the letter to his mom. And he says, mom, uh, I was told to give you this letter and you need to read this letter. So the mom opens the letter and she starts reading this letter and tears start running down the mom's face as she's reading this letter. So she finishes reading this letter folds the letter up, puts it back in the envelope. And of course, the boy is looking at his mom because she's crying her eyes out. She, he says, well, what's the matter? What, what did the letter say? And the mom says, look, this letter is from your school. And the school is saying that you are so smart. You are so wonderful. You are so amazing. They don't have good enough teachers to teach you at school. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to teach you myself and, you know, give you all the best books to read, give you all the best education, because the school is saying that you are so clever, you're so far ahead of everybody else that they don't really have a good enough class for you to be in. And, you know, that's what they do. From then on, the mom starts homeschooling this boy um, and and the boy grows up, you know, very wonderful. He reads many books and he becomes, uh, you know, very educated, etc. And then one day, the mom passes away. The mom dies, right? And of course, the boy has already grown up. He's a man now. Uh, so as he's going through his mom's stuff and he's sorting everything out after her death, he finds this letter and he goes, oh, that's the letter I got from the school when I was a boy. So he goes ahead and he opens that letter and he starts reading the letter from the school. And the letter says, uh, Dear Madam, uh, your son is so stupid. He's so dumb. He's so incapable that we don't want him back at the school. We don't want to waste the time of the teachers teaching him. We don't have a class slow enough and stupid enough for your son to be in. So from now on, please don't bring your son to the school. That's what the letter actually said. Now, do you want to know who that little boy was? That little boy was Thomas Edison, one of the most successful inventors in the history of humankind one of the smartest people on this planet. And he got kicked out of his school because they thought he was too dumb. Now, what's the moral of the story, guys? The moral of the story is what story do we tell ourselves and what story do we believe? Now, Thomas Edison's mom, when she first saw the letter, she could have believed that story. She could have said, ah, my son is an idiot. My son is so stupid, the school kicked him out and just keep at it. But she refused to believe that story. Instead, she created another one that she told her son. She said to her son, you're so smart, you're so wonderful, you're so incredible that I'm going to go ahead and teach you myself. And he grew up to be one of the geniuses of our history, right? And this, and this is not just a clever, good, nice story. 
This is actually scientifically based. I studied psychology at university in UK, right? And one of the things we've learned was, was the bias. So there was actually a scientific experiment done where at the beginning of the year, the school gathered all the teachers or not all the teachers, but a, a group, small group of teachers. And the school said, look, we have seen your teaching excellence. You four are the best teachers in this school. You are the best teachers in the school. So what we're going to do, what we've done, we actually, out of all the school population, we selected the most clever, the most capable, the best students from this whole school, and we assigned them to your classes because the four of you are the best teachers in the school. And we expect you to get incredibly good results. We expect these kids to be very advanced and to progress very well um, in your care because you're so good teachers and these kids are the smartest kids and we expect to get really, really good results by the end of this year. Now, because we have to be politically correct and we don't want to upset anybody, we're actually not going to tell the parents of the kids or the kids that they have been selected for this amazing class, that they have been given the best teachers, which is going to keep it quiet. But you know, so just go ahead and do what you do the best. Teach these kids, right? And of course, by the end of the year, the four classes that were assigned to these teachers led not only the school, they led the whole district by attainment, by the scores, by the grades. They were like the best in the whole region, right? And by the end of the year, they gather those teachers again uh, and they say, we have to tell you something that you didn't know. Those kids that we gave you at the beginning of the year were actually not selected. They were not the smartest and most capable kids. We just selected kids at random from school population and we just allocated them to your class. And at this, the teachers go, oh, how is it possible? But the kids were so good. They listened so well. They were so learning so well. It was just so easy to teach them. How could it be? Aha, uh -huh. it must be because we are so good teachers. And then at this point, the, the head of the school says, well, we have to let you in on the second part of this experiment. It was actually what is called a double blind experiment. So the kids were selected at random from the school population. And you four teachers, we selected you at random as well from all the teachers in the school. So you were not selected because you were the best teachers. So how could have this experiment worked? Why did these kids did so well? Because of expectation. Because the, the teachers expected these kids to be the best. Because the head of the school expected these teachers to be the best. And when we expect for best things to happen, when we expect for people to do their best, when we see only the best things in people, guess what happens? The best things come out of people. The people flourish. The people do incredible things. Because we encourage them and we expect wonderful things to happen. Do you understand this? Is this giving you, is this making the penny drop? If you're getting this, give me a five in comments. Just write a number five in the comments if this is making sense, right? So it's all about expectations. So how does this then apply to your home-based business? You know, because I know it's a nice story to tell, but how the hell does this apply to your business? Well, it applies a lot. Because if you're a leader, if you're building a team and you want your team to do well, guess what you have to start doing? You have to look for all the best things in your team, for all the wonderful. You have to become blind to all the bad things. You have to stop looking for, ah, she's a bit stupid. Ah, she's a bit arrogant. Ah, she's a bit lazy. Or oh, he's a bit... Stop doing that. Because if you look for bad things, then the bad things will just multiply. But if you look at your team and you only see the best in them, you only see the potential in them. You only see the amazing things in them. Guess what's going to happen? They will feel it. Even if you don't say it to them, they will feel that you always expect the best from them and they will do their best. 
they will try to reach these expectations of yours and you will get incredible results. And guess what? This doesn't just apply to your team. It also applies to you. So if you expect the, the best things from yourself, then the best things will come. But if you constantly criticize yourself saying, oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not beautiful enough. My hair is not nice enough. I'm not. If you do that, then more horrible things will come. You will keep being bad at it. But if you look at the best things about yourself and you say, well, I'm really good at this and I'm really good at that and I love doing this and I love doing that, then more of the good things will appear. You know what I mean? And that's the lesson for today, guys. So I hope you got some value from this. If you did, feel free to share this video. Maybe somebody else will need to hear this message. Maybe somebody else needs to change the story in their head. And by you sharing that video, maybe they will see it. Okay, have a great rest of your evening. And if you'd like to get a free ebook called How to Build a Part-Time Business While Keeping a Full-Time Job, drop me a private message and I'll be more than happy to send you that ebook. Have a great rest of your evening, guys. Love you loads. See you at the top. Bye for now.